What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the FF Ballbusters podcast. Thank you for joining us. We are recording this on Wednesday morning, April 5th. My name is Eric. That's my co-host, Will. How are you doing this morning, man? Hey, man, I'm doing good. It's finally uh, draft season for Dynasty, so I'm excited to talk some rankings. 100%, 100%. Uh, um, but yeah, so today we're going to get into kind of an ADP battle type video where we talk about uh, players at each position that are going pretty close in ADP uh, that you might be deciding between in your startups or in trades, whatever the case may be. Um, and so, yeah, we we actually flipped a coin uh, with all of these ADP battles to decide who we're going to debate for. Um, and then at the end, we're, we're going to reveal who we actually would pick in these scenarios to help you guys out in all of those situations. So without further ado, let's get right into the quarterback position where we start out with Kyler Murray versus Deshaun Watson. All right. Sounds good. And I am going to be arguing on the side of Kyler Murray for this one. So I got Kyler Murray on this one and we can go ahead and get started. So Kyler Murray's got one of those. It's sort of a stranger career for Kyler Murray. Uh, he started out extremely hot. He's one of those players who, if he were to unlock his full potential, he would be in that upper tier of quarterbacks with like the Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allens of the NFL in terms of just being the complete package. He's a great dual threat quarterback in terms of passing and throwing the ball. However, he has shown a lot of inconsistency throughout his career. He's shown that he can start off a season really hot and that production can kind of tail off throughout the season. But I would consider a lot of that to be the fault of the coaching staff. Uh, as you saw, Cliff Kingsbury ended up being a fake sharp, as a lot of people like to call him. He got removed out of there. Now they have John Gannon in that head coaching position. Uh, Kyler Murray also got hurt last year, so he's going to be coming into this season with that injury. If he's even, he's probably not going to be good to start the season out. Uh, he's going to end up probably sitting a few games if he doesn't sit for a majority of the season, just because they did pay him so much money. So who's to know? But in terms of talent itself, Kyler Murray is the complete package. He's shown the ability to be a top five, top three quarterback in fantasy. He's also shown that when he is at his worst, he is still a top 10 quarterback in fantasy. He still is able to produce. So, uh, yeah, really for Kyler Murray, I just think that, you know, at the age that he's at, he's still very young. He's got a lot of his career ahead of him. Obviously, the Arizona Cardinals have put a lot behind this guy, and they want to build more around him. Uh, even last year, he didn't have his number one target in D-Hop for a majority of that season. There, I don't even think he played too many games where D-Hop and Marquise Brown were both on the field at the same time. So we Almost never, none. Yeah. yeah. So we never even really got to see what the potential of Kyler Murray with an amazing wide receiver core could look like, and that's something we could see in the future if this team is to keep building around him the way that they have been. So yeah, that's my side for Kyler Murray and Dynasty. All right, there's the Kyler argument. On to me. I flipped a coin and I got Deshaun Watson. Um, so shout out to david gautieri uh you can follow him at guru fantasy world world with no o on twitter highly recommend it he's a great follow he's been pounding the table for deshaun watson and i totally agree with him but let me address the elephant in the room first deshaun is discounted for being a scumbag he's gross it doesn't feel good to pick him i wouldn't blame you for not picking him totally understand all of that but if we're strictly talking from a fantasy perspective and if you can stomach it he's only 27 years old his contract structure has no outs, so he's locked in as Cleveland starter for the next five years at least. And I know that he didn't look great at the end of last year, but he was coming off of missing almost two full seasons of NFL football uh, and wasn't able to practice with his team at all until the week that he made his first start. So call me crazy, but I don't think that any quarterback would do well in that situation. Even so, he still managed a positive touchdown ratio of se or positive touchdown to interception ratio of seven to five and was on pace for almost 500 yards rushing. In his other four seasons in the NFL, his points per game fantasy finishes have been one, four, two, and six. He's absolutely an elite fantasy asset, but he's not being priced like one. So that's my argument for Deshaun Watson. You gave your argument for Kyler Murray. You want to do a little countdown here and say who we would actually pick in this scenario? Yeah, I'm down for it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, ready? We'll, mm -hmm. we'll do it on or after one. Okay. 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 All right. Three, two, one. Kyler Kyle. Murray. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in agreement here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that, like, I, like you said, I don't hate Deshaun Watson. It's just the fact that, one, he's not a great person. But if we're talking strictly from a fantasy perspective, 
He's on the older side, and last year's play was not very encouraging for me going forward for Deshaun Watson. Like, because it's like you said, uh, back when he did play those four years, he was amazing. He was elite. But uh, we, I didn't really see too many shades of that at all last year. Hopefully, he's able to get back into the swing of things. But if we're going based on the person who has performed the latest and who we know for a fact when they touch the field they're going to produce, it's Kyler Murray. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a little bit concerned from the performance that we saw out of Watson. Um, what I said in my debate portion wasn't a lie. I do believe that he was put in a situation where he was bound to fail um, mm -hmm. without being able to practice with the team and stuff like that. So I expect him to improve, but will he regain the same level of play that he had, you know, prior to missing these two seasons? Who's to say? You know, we all got to find out. Um, and yeah, Kyler Murray's upside is just incredible. He had that stretch, um, I believe, in 2021, 20, uh, prior to his AC joint sprain, where he was averaging like 28 points per game, which was above Lamar Jackson's, uh, you know, the greatest fantasy quarterback finish of all time. Um, so, yeah, Kyler, is, if, if he can stay healthy and if he can produce at that level, he's, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in fantasy, like you mentioned. And he's got a new coaching staff that I believe in way more than his previous one. Yeah, Cliff Kingsbury was ass, bro. Like, he was pretty bad. 100%. All right. So we're in agreement there. Uh, before we move on to the next position, I do just want to bring up a partnership that we have with Dynasty Owner. Um, they're a really exciting and unique way to play Dynasty Fantasy Football. Um, we're both on the site. We both enjoy our experiences so far, so we encourage you to do the same. Um, they actually use real-life NFL contracts and salaries uh, to, to base off of their players. So when you go and play, you're using their real-life stuff, which I think is really cool. It makes off-season moves way more important. All the stuff throughout the off-season gets way more exciting in a league format like this. You can also make money doing it. You can do it in the traditional way, where if you are in the top four of your league, you get a payout. But also, if you're a really savvy dynasty manager and you can create really good dynasty teams, you can go to their dynasty owner marketplace and sell the teams that you bought into for even more money. So I think it's just a really, really, really cool way to play dynasty fantasy football. And if you're interested in joining the site, use our code BALLBUSTERS uh, for 20% off when you sign up. Um, and yeah, just go enjoy the site. Use our code BALLBUSTERS. Uh, support us and support them. It'd be great. Hell yeah. And thank you, dynasty owner, for the opportunity for sure hell yeah all right on to the wide receiver position um another couple guys who i'm i've had to decide between a couple different times here recently uh and i am on the fence a little bit about it. i do have a decision um but let's talk about it here we're talking garrett wilson and jalen waddle indeed indeed i'm going to be arguing on the side of garrett wilson for this one so we're gonna go ahead and get started so Garrett Wilson, obviously last year, he was a rookie. He's going into his second year in the NFL. And last year's production was extremely good for a rookie, to be honest with you. Usually if you see a rookie break like 500 receiving yards, they're poised to have a good career. He doubled that. He had 1,103 receiving yards and four touchdowns. So obviously he was able to produce. Uh, the one thing that was the biggest issue for Garrett Wilson last year was he had Zach Wilson at quarterback for about eight games. And that's going to drag things down quite a bit. I believe his average depth of target last year was 10.7 yards per uh, per uh, catch, which is not uh, 10.7 yards per. Um, why am I breaking? Why am I breaking down on this right now? You're good. Per target, 10.7 yards per target, there and we, we expect those to go up quite a bit uh, when. I believe he averaged 12.7 points per game. When Zach Wilson was on the field, that number went down to 8.8. .8. When Zach Wilson was not on the field, that number was 17.7. .7. And that's with Mike White and Joe Flacco at quarterback. So that kind of shows that Garrett Wilson doesn't even really need a good quarterback back there. Uh, he's not quite QB proof, as we've seen, because Zach Wilson could bring him down. But in terms of his overall talent, if there is someone out there who can at least get the ball somewhat in his direction, he can make something happen with it. So... I do like Garrett Wilson, and hopefully this year he is able to land an elite quarterback option in, or at least a very good quarterback option in what is a 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers with whatever it is the Jets are doing with this trade. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but it does seem like that is the case. Yeah. Um, all right, I got the Jalen Waddle side of this argument, so I'll get into it. Waddle burst onto the scene 
in 2021, leading all rookie receivers in catches with 104 and demanding a ridiculous 141 targets as a rookie. He showed us that he could be an alpha right out of the gates. Then came a new coaching staff and the addition of Tyreek Hill. Even with the cheetah on the field, he still commanded a solid 21.4% target share. And although his total targets and receptions did go down, his efficiency and total yardage went way up. Uh, he led the entire NFL in yards per target and yards per reception. He put up 1,350 yards and eight touchdowns on his way to a wide receiver seven finish last year. And icing on the cake is that his situation just around him is fantastic. Assuming that Tua does stay healthy, he has a really a really good long-term starter at quarterback uh, and a great offensive-minded head coach and play caller in Mike McDaniel. So I think he's set up for many more years of consistent success. So that's my argument for Waddle. You put out yours for Garrett Wilson. We'll do another countdown and say who we who we would actually pick. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Jalen Waddle. Ooh, yeah. okay. So we argued for the opposite. I, I, what you? What do you have to say? So my only issue with Garrett Wilson, it isn't a talent issue at all. It's just a situation issue. Um, so with Aaron Rodgers coming over to the Jets, I just got a really bad feeling that it's going to be like a, I don't know. I, I always refer to these. I know we're switching sports, but like a LeBron situation where he's able to switch over to teams. He's able to get a lot of control over how that team is built and how a lot of things are put around in that team. And it may end up blowing up the team just a little bit. Like, it's going to end up obviously benefiting Aaron Rodgers, but don't know how much it's going to benefit the people who are already there on the team that weren't put in place by Aaron Rodgers. As we've seen, Alan Lazard already signed to the Jets. Uh, he's lobbying to try to get Odell Beckham out there as well. I know Odell recently received an offer from the Ravens. That doesn't really mean much until he signs anything, but the Jets are also lobbying pretty hard to try to get him over there. So I feel like if those two are both over there, it's not it's going to hurt Garrett Wilson a little bit. He's not going to be a clear number one, at least in terms of familiarity with the um, Aaron Rodgers for sure in chemistry. I just feel like that's something that could affect it. But again, I don't know how long Aaron Rodgers would even be with the team if he's over there, stuff like that. So it's it's a lot of variables. I just don't like the signs that I'm seeing with Aaron Rodgers and how much they're trying to, you know, give him an opinion over there. Yeah. All of that's totally fair and kind of unpredictable. So it's really oh, hard to for sure. project. For sure. Yeah. Um, and and Aaron Rodgers still hasn't officially signed. Like we fully expect that to be the case, but like it's possible that he just doesn't go to the Jets. Who knows? Um, but yeah, for me, I love both of these guys. Like I said, I've been deciding between the two of them. It's, it's split in hairs. Um, but... I think Waddle is the clear wide receiver two on the team currently. And I think that Garrett Wilson would be the clear wide receiver one, kind of regardless of scenario who they bring in even is Odell. Uh, they already have Alan Lazard. Um, like you said, he's almost quarterback proof. He produced with Zach Wilson, Joe Flacco, Mike White. If he gets Aaron Rodgers, that's a huge upgrade, even mm -hmm. at Aaron Rodgers, his point in his career. Um, and I just see like kind of the, uh, they're not the same player, but I see shades of like a Justin Jefferson and the type of receiver that Garrett Wilson is compared to Waddle, where he's just more well-rounded, um, incredible, savvy route runner, really good after the catch. Just a guy that like his quarterback can trust and go to in every situation. Whereas I feel like Jalen Waddle is kind of lacking in some portions of his game that can definitely be hidden and he can be an absolute weapon, mm -hmm. but it's just not the same uh, super well-rounded uh total package uh, no, that so is, I just feel a little bit more comfortable with Wilson that is fair Waddle also deals with a good amount of injury issues as well like he is he does yeah. a tough time staying out there on the field all season so that is fair it's 100 percent fair yeah so yeah really close battle there but those are our takes I thought it was funny that we just argued for the opposite <laughs> but that was pretty cool um before we get into the running backs, you want to hit us with our other ad read here? Yes, sir. In our other ad read, we have pon wow, we have sponsored Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I am so sorry, guy. Oh my God. We have I spit out my water. <laughs> <laughs> we have partnered with the Fantasy League Winners website. So we do some content over there as well, some video content. So if you guys want to check out that website, you can go over there. They have a lot of articles, videos, a lot of resources that you can go to check out for just your fantasy football knowledge and stuff. There's a lot of great creators over there working with us. And as a part of that, we have also partnered with Underdog Fantasy. So with Underdog Fantasy, 
you uh, if you're a first time user, they will match your first deposit up to one hundred dollars. So if you put in twenty dollars, they'll give you twenty. If you put in forty, you'll, they'll give you forty. They also have great promos and stuff like that running all the time for you to use your money. You can you know gamble responsibly, of course, and just put out some great bets out there. So if you're a first time user and you use code FFLW. That'll get you a deposit match on your first time deposit up to $100. Or you can use the link that's down in the description below for Underdog Fantasy. And, you know, as always, we want to thank the Fantasy League winners for this opportunity. We also want to thank Underdog Fantasy for this opportunity as well. And again, that is promo code FFLW for a first time de uh, match deposit. Perfect. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I, I think it is clear when you say it, but just in case there's any confusion... You say the thing about the deposit match, you put in 20, they give you 20. Mm -hmm. It still give you an additional 20. So you'll have $40 right. to play with. Put in 40, they give you an additional 40. But I think I think they got that. Yeah. Also, everything is linked down in the description below. So uh, the underdog code, the dynasty owner code, and another one that we have uh, coming later in the video will also be down there. So go check it out. Indeed. Um, all right. On to the running back position. I won't delay it too much we got kenneth walker versus travis Etienne, and will you are up first yeah i'm gonna be arguing kenneth walker uh last year going into last season kenneth walker was not the starter it was rashad penny for the seahawks so weeks one to five oh well, even week one kenneth walker didn't play he was dealing with a preseason groin injury uh but going through seasons two to five he was the backup until rashad penny unfortunately uh, did i say year you said seasons two to five <laughs> weeks two to five my bet uh weeks two to five uh he was the backup uh until Rashad Penny went down with the season ending injury unfortunately Rashad Penny back next year though you know what I'm saying but Kenneth Walker was able to get the starting role and he kind of took off with it and ended up doing really well with it uh over those over that time period he was able to rush for 200 228 times for a thousand and fifty yards so not bad at all, considering he wasn't the starter for the first five weeks of the season. Uh, he's also very featured in that offense, as we know. The Seahawks like to run a lot through the run game. Obviously, they have two very good receiving options, but if Pete Carroll could run the ball every single play, he would. And that's kind of something we got to see last year in terms of Kenneth Walker's volume. Also, in terms of passing volume, he was pretty used in the passing game i wouldn't say he was an elite passing option but at the same time they have shown that they will use him in the passing game as well so that's not a lost part of kenneth walker's game and going forward i do see him being a big featured part of this offense especially after the trust they gave him last year and what he was able to do with it so yeah i got kenneth walker on this one all right i like it um i got travis Etienne for this debate um and i think travis Etienne is just one of the most electric running backs that we've seen drafted in recent memory um he absolutely deletes tackling angles of defenders with his speed and cutting ability people like to say that he's small um, but he's actually listed at 215 which is technically bigger than kenneth walker is listed at 211. Um, i do think that they probably play their actual play weight is probably pretty close together but still Etienne is probably given too much flack for being small when that's not really the case. Um, he's ultra explosive and incredibly efficient as well. Uh, according to Dynasty IM on Twitter, there have been 34 second year running backs to run for two and a half yards per team rush attempt. Only 34, or sorry, of those 34, only two accomplished it with less than a 50% carry percentage. Two guys are Jamal Charles and Travis Etienne. So he's in elite company. He's, like I said, just one of the most explosive and electric backs that we've seen in quite some time. Um, I think that ETN has the edge in rushing efficiency and receiving ability over Kenneth Walker. So in this case, I'm going to argue for Travis ETN. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, bet. So let's do another countdown here and reveal who we would actually pick. Okay. Three, two, one. Travis ETN. Travis ETN question mark it's Travis Etienne <laughs> I feel like but it's only by a slight margin I'm I'm really conflicted on this one this is a genuine might be me yeah like I this one like you said it could go either way uh both are very featured in their offenses Travis is like you said he's electric and he's used a little bit more in the passing game just a little bit like in yeah and definitely like in college he was more known as like a receiver a receiving back than like kenneth walker was in college as well so sure. like that could even go up more depending on how the team decides to deploy him but yeah like even based off of team i don't know like they're both very close like these are both two very good offenses at least primed to be very good offenses next year so yeah it's like you said it's tough 
It's very close between these two. Yeah, I, I like the offensive situation a little bit better in Jacksonville mm -hmm. than I do in Seattle. Um, I think that Travis Etienne overall is more dynamic and well-rounded. Um, I'm a little bit worried about injuries with him. Um, it, he doesn't seem to be the most durable when given a big workload. Yeah. Um, but he's super efficient, like I mentioned. Um, and yeah, if if he can stop fumbling the football and, uh, you know, just clean up the game a little bit, I think that he has the potential to be an absolutely elite producer. But I could make a fairly similar argument for Kenneth Walker. You know, it's slightly less on the receiving side, but probably more able to handle a bigger workload on, you know, in the in the rushing game. I think that the coaching staff there has shown that they're willing to give that to him. Um, he got tons of red zone work last yeah, year, which you love lot. to see. Um, so he's got high touchdown upside. It's it's really tough to decide between these guys. I tend to lean the guys that have higher receiving upside, especially in half PPR or full PPR leagues. But uh, yeah, it's real close. Absolutely. Uh, but like you said, I think Travis Etienne slightly gets the edge, but it's it could go either way, honestly. I wouldn't be mad at either of these picks. Yeah. So sorry for not actually making the decision for tough one but maybe you know one of those arguments resonated more with you and you can lean that direction um before we get into our last position group here we do have one more partnership to talk about um we are partnered with do numbers an apparel brand uh run by our friend zay uh i mean so if you're interested in some cool hoodies or merch like the ones that i'm wearing right now uh, super comfortable, really cool, wear them all the time. Um, go to snacks.online, that will be linked in the description below, um, and use our promo code FFBallBusters15 for 15% 15 off your order on all of this cool apparel and merch. So go check it out. Bet, yeah, definitely check out Do Numbers. You make some great stuff over there. And with that being said, we're gonna get into the last matchup over here. This is gonna be a more exotic one. A more exotic one at the tight end position, if mm -hmm. you can call it that. Um, yeah, we're, we're talking Pat Fryermuth and David Njoku. So I'll let you kick it off. Okay. I'm arguing on the side of the Muth, Mr. Pat Fryermuth. The Muth. Uh, the Muth. So Pat Fryermuth uh, was somebody who, unlike a lot of tight ends in the league, he was able to come in and sort of produce right away, especially in terms of touchdowns his rookie year. I think he scored, what, 10 of them? 10 touchdowns? Yeah. Something crazy for a rookie tight end. Uh, last year, that sort of trailed off just a little bit, but in terms of his volume, his volume went up quite a bit in terms of his target share and all that. So there's a lot of good indications for Fryermuth going forward. Like last year, uh, I believe was fourth amongst all tight ends in target share with like a 20%, 19.84% uh, target share. I got it right here. And an air yard share of 20.15%. Uh, so with him taking that next step forward, if he were to do that, obviously that would be a very good thing for Pat Fryermuth going forward. Uh, but one thing that was a bit of a concern for Pat is his ability to stay on the field. He did deal with a lot of concussions last year. Then he dealt with a couple his rookie year. And with concussions, it's weird because you never really know how many someone has suffered. And is that an indicator that's going to stop me from going forward with Pat Fryermuth? I would absolutely say no. Uh, he was still able to get out there and play for 16 games. Even though he may not have finished all 16, he was out there on the field able to get back. Um, so with that being said, you know, Pratt Fryermuth, also 24 years old, has a lot of uh, time left in the league. He's been featured already. So when it comes to tight ends, especially in the scarce field that tight ends are, uh, Pat Fryermuth is definitely up there with the elite options, or not really the elite options. He's not a Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews, but he's still up there in like that maybe second or third tier of tight ends. Yeah, I dig it. Um, I am on the Njoku side of this, so I'll get into that. He is a former round pick he's still only 26 years old although it does seem like he's been in the nfl for quite some time he is an athletic freak and he's attached to deshaun watson as opposed to kenny pickett uh and we've we've fully documented our kind of hate for kenny pickett we'll see if he can turn it around but to this point in his career although it has been short i'm not sure if he can get it done as a full-time starter in the nfl um, and Joku did deal with some injuries uh, and a changing quarterback situation last season, but he was still able to put up a solid 18.8% target share and a staggering 30% red zone target share. He was second amongst tight ends in red zone targets, so that's really, really encouraging. 
Um, unfortunately, his target accuracy was 31st in the league, so it only led to four total touchdowns. But I expect both of those numbers to improve this season with Deshaun Watson able to practice and be around the team throughout the entire offseason. Um, I think he's at worst the third option in this passing attack after they brought in, um, of course, now I'm forgetting his name from the Jets, Elijah Moore. Mm hmm. Um, I, I think maybe he's still even second just with Elijah Moore being the new addition to the team. Um, and he just signed a substantial extension, locking him up through 2025. So he's a long-term starter for this team attached to a better quarterback, in my opinion. And yeah, that's my argument for David and Joe. No, I like that. All right. Big reveal. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Pat for David and Joe. Oh, okay. So yeah. we did argue for the guys that we would go with. Yeah. What I'm, do you have to say? I'm sticking with the Muth. I don't like Kenny Pickett, but I also don't think he's as bad as I give him credit for. But at the same time, who's to know who's going to be the quarterback for the Steelers going forward or where Pat Fryermuth's going to end up in the next couple of years just because he is young. He could end up in a better position or, you know, the Steelers can end up pretty bad and they could get another good quarterback option and go forward and then Pat Fryermuth could be an elite option. Again, that's all a bunch of predictive, unpredictable stuff. It's just random. But when it comes to David and Joku, it's, it's tough for me to root for him against the younger guy just because, like you said, he's still 26, so he's young himself, but he's been in the league forever. And the fact that, like, he just started producing last year is kind of, it's weird, man. Like, it's, it felt like a really, really late breakout, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. He's had inconsistent production. I, I still think that his year put him kind of in line. Like, he didn't have a rookie year flop. Mm -hmm. um, and then he's just had a terrible situation around him since then. Uh, and it, you can argue that this is a good thing in terms of, we haven't seen him fully healthy. Also, you could argue it's a bad thing that he's been dealing with injuries throughout his career, but we haven't seen, you know, a full season of David and Joku for a while. Um, I think that this team believes in him. Um, and I think you mentioned like Kenny Pickett in that situation, how it could go. Um, I know that this isn't a direct argument for and Joku, but like the Steelers haven't been below 500 under Mike Tom. No, ever that's right? facts that's big facts he somehow always keeps them in the mix for some reason i don't understand why like what is he fighting for is he just <laughs> fighting to keep that winning record uh, maybe but it's just it's only going to keep hurting that team as we've seen well with its current quarterback situation yeah. yeah like if they continue to be above 500 and not be able to draft a good quarterback yeah i i don't think kenny pickett is going anywhere anytime soon because they're not going to be able to find placement for him um, so that's why I, I like that David Njoku is attached to Deshaun Watson. Um, I, th I think that that situation and that offense is trending up. And I guess you could probably argue that for the Steelers as well, but it, not quite to the same degree and also starting from kind of a lower level. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, it is splitting hairs. Pat Fryermuth is younger. He's got uh, a couple more years of career ahead of him. Um, but the situation here, along with the talent, I like Njoku as a talent, uh, is enough for me to pick him. No, nah, I dig it. It's like you said, I, I'm always rooting for David Njoku every year. Like, every year I want him to do well, especially since that uh, year of hard knocks they did with the Browns. It's just, yeah. I'm still waiting on that big year out of David Njoku. Hopefully this is it. <laughs> True. Yeah, 100%. All right. But that will wrap up our video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did like the video, please drop a like on it. That helps us out a ton. Um, I hope that you guys learned something from it. Hopefully we helped you decide between some of these guys and your upcoming startups or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, go check out all of the uh, partnerships and sponsors that we do have linked in the description below, whether that be uh, Dynasty Owner, a great way to play uh, kind of a unique, different Dynasty experience. Um, our code at, holy crap, our code at Underdog, underdog Fantasy. Fantasy. Sorry, Underdog, you guys are great. I love you site and code FFLW over there and also uh, do numbers for some awesome apparel uh, using our code FFBallBusters15. Hell yeah. And then make sure you guys do all that great YouTube stuff too. Make sure you guys are dropping comments down below. We love the interactions. We love the engagement. Um, you guys can hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you know when we drop all of our latest videos. And also check down the description below for a link to our Discord if you want to join that community as well. We got some great people in there. It's not just us giving advice as well. We got a lot of capable people in there that can give some advice too. So yeah, make sure you guys join and be a part of the community as well. And 
If you guys are looking for a roster review, that stuff is submitted through the Discord as well. So that's a great way to get involved. But with that being 100%. said, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. And we love you. And we'll, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.